Hi guys, Dane here, and today I have a very exciting video. So this is the part of my bookshelf tour that deals with my Stephen King collection. It's obviously only my red Stephen Kings, as it's only my red books that are in my tours. So uh, I have maybe a half dozen more on my TBR shelves as well. But without further ado, I guess, let's go through all of the Stephen King books I own. So we'll start with Salem's Lot. So this is a vampire novel. I think it was his second book. It's strange because I got to this one fairly late, and so by the time I read this, I'd already come across Father Callahan in the Dark Tower books, which kind of made it quite interesting to read, I guess, from that point of view. Did really enjoy it, though. I mean, uh, Dracula is one of my favourite classics, and this is heavily influenced by Dracula, but I did also like to see how King kind of made the vampire legend his own as well. Sinister book, the stuff with the rats in it was kind of creepy as well, and uh, yeah. Okay, then we have 112263. This is one of his more recent books, and this basically deals with time travel and alternative history. So the main character goes back in time and uh, stops the assassination of John F. Kennedy, and then we see what effect that has on the future. But also, basically because of this little kind of quirk, he can go back in time, but only to, I think, like 1959. So he has to live in the past for four years before he can even make that attempt. And so that kind of opens up the storyline a lot more. And, you know, we get to see how, like, different generations of different families turned out and stuff. For instance, there is a, a kid, I think, whose life he can save, if I remember correctly. And, uh, yeah, one of my favourites, actually. I gave this one a five out of five. One of his longer novels as well, but definitely worth it. Okay, then we have Blaze, which is one of the Backman books. I read this one quite a long time ago and actually I don't really remember it that well so I'm not gonna say too much more about it probably do a reread I do have the Backman books on my TBR here we have a, a, this is a bind up of Carrie and the Tommy knockers so I actually read this on holiday in Amsterdam I remember it vividly and uh, I'd already read a bunch of King by this point but uh, still I enjoyed Carrie. I actually really enjoyed the Tommy Knockers as well, which a lot of people don't like. Um, he kind of this was uh, like the height of his cocaine abuse, and actually I think it's like the last one that he re he wrote before quitting. I could be wrong, but um, I actually really liked it, and I liked the kind of way that the the technology was being used, like repurposed in it as well by the characters. So um, that may that will make sense if you've read it. I hope. And Carrie is obviously just a classic. Here we have Cell, and I rescued this from a charity shop bin. I used to work above a charity shop, and uh, basically they were throwing this book out. So I, I rescued it, and really enjoyed it. This was probably another 4.5 or 5 out of 5 for me. The villain in it was maybe a little bit kind of one-sided and almost pantomime-like, but I really liked the central kind of idea of like this, this sort of disease or whatever you want to call it being... Uh, like pass from person to person through mobile phones and so you, you couldn't use a phone I loved the ending in it it was kind of an ambiguous ending and I thought it was the perfect ending and I also really liked how it like got straight into the action right at the start within like 20 pages everyone's going mental like I, I appreciated that it, it respected my time as a reader here we have Cujo Probably one of his darker novels. I didn't necessarily love this book, but I did quite like it. I, I would say it's maybe a four out of five for me. It's about uh, a St. Bernard. Okay, here we have Dark Visions, which is uh, three stories by Stephen King, Dan Simmons, and George R.R. R. Martin. It's delightfully psychedelic. When I saw this book, and it was £1.25 from like a bargain bin in a, a book bookshop, so I had to get it. Edited by Douglas E. Winter. So from Stephen King, we have The Reploid, Sneakers and Dedication. From Dan Simmons, we have Metastasis. Vanny Fucci is alive and well and living in hell and Iverson's Pits. And then George R.R. R. Martin, we have The Skin Trade, which I believe was a vampire story in the vein of uh, Salem's Lot. There we go. Here we have Different Seasons. This is four novellas. We have Rita Hayworth and Shawshank Redemption. Apt Pupil, The Body, and The Breathing Method. So uh, I think three of the four of these have been turned into movies. So The Body became Stand By Me. I watched Apt Pupil on Netflix recently, although the novella is better. Then obviously Shawshank Redemption. The Breathing Method as well was crazy about uh, this woman who's pregnant. And uh, it's just really disturbing, basically. I really enjoyed this. All four of these were great. My favourite was Apt Pupil, but definitely recommend it. 
Uh, probably as an overall, I would say that's like a 4.5 for me. Okay, then we have Doctor Sleep, the sequel to The Shining. And I am obviously not a True King fan because I preferred this to The Shining. So I'll talk about The Shining more when I get to that one. But uh, this one, part of it may be the circumstances in which I'd read it. I'd, I'd probably read maybe a dozen King books by this point, And this was his newest at the time, I think, as well. And... Uh, I read this, most of this, while basically roughing it in London. So I'd been on the radio on, on the BBC World Service and that finished at 3am and the first trains weren't till 6. So I just spent those three hours in London, like on a bench in the middle of the night just reading this book. And uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. It's probably as well because uh, Danny Torrance is all grown up in it and Danny was my favourite character from The Shining. So uh, that helped. Here we have Dolores Claiborne. This is another 5 out of 5. A lot of these are 5 out of 5s, really. And um, this is... I think this was all told from Dolores... Uh, yeah, from her point of view as well. So all in first person, which is quite good. And uh, this kind of goes with some of his other books in terms of, you know, having uh, main characters who are abused wives. Here we have Duma Key. This was probably like the fourth one of his that I read. And I really enjoyed this actually. I think it's an underrated King book. Granted, it's been so long since I read it that I can't remember it. But um, yeah, I'm probably about due a reread of it. I did really enjoy it at the time. And uh, yeah, would recommend. Then we have End of Watch. This is the third book in the Bill Hodges trilogy. I said that weirdly. I kind of knew how this was going to end based on the very, like, the title of the book. But. It was better than the second one, not as good as the first one in my opinion. But I'm glad I did read it and I'm glad I've like finished the trilogy. Although now I believe uh, The Outsider, or whatever it's called. It might be The Outsiders, I keep getting it confused with uh, Essie Hinton. But um, yeah, I think that has like Holly Gibney in it or something. So, speaking of Bill Hodges, the next one here is Finders Keepers, the second book in the series. This one was like a 3 out of 5 for me, really disappointed me to be honest, but Mr. Mercedes was great, but then the problem with the rest of the series was that it kind of went from being like police procedural to suddenly all these psychic powers and stuff, and I just didn't think the two of them worked well together, and uh, this one in particular was kind of boring because... Bill Hodges was barely even in it, and he, he was the best character for me. So. Then we have Firestarter, one of his earlier ones, and one of my favourites, probably a 5 out of 5 again. This follows a young girl called Charlie, who basically has, like, psychic fire powers. Yeah, definitely recommend Firestarter, loved it. Then we have Four Past Midnight, so this has four novellas in it. It has, um, it has The Langoliers, Secret Window, Secret Garden, The Library Policeman, and The Sundog. Out of this, my favourite was easily The Langoliers. That was a 5 out of 5 story for me. The Library Policeman was good as well, but overall the collection was like maybe a 4. Did enjoy reading it though. I remember reading at least part of it at my mum's house in Tamworth. Yeah, I mean, I would recommend most Stephen King books. But I would recommend, even if you get this and just read The Langoliers, it's basically about these people are in this plane and it kind of passes into this alternative dimension where everything is dead and dying. And that's all I want to tell, tell you about that one. Here we have From a Buick 8. This is another one that I got from that charity shop bin that they were throwing away. This wasn't his best, to be honest. I probably gave it like a 3.5 out of 5. It's about like the Pennsylvania State Police and this haunted car they have in one of their sheds. Full Dark, No Stars. This is a short story collection. I read this ages ago, and so actually I don't remember it. It does have 1922 in it. Which, uh, that actually is one of his best short stories, in my opinion. And there's a Netflix version of that. Actually, I do remember this. It has Big Driver as well. That was a good one, too. But, um, yeah, actually, I would definitely recommend this just for those first two stories, if nothing else. Here we have It. Obviously, one of his most well-known books. Kids in Derry. The clown Pennywise, the evil that returns every 26 years. Was it every 26 years? I think it was every 26 years. Uh, double 13. And, uh... Yeah, I read this on holiday with uh, my mom. She rented a cottage and we were out on holiday and I read this throughout that week and absolutely loved it. Probably, I might I might even reread this through audiobook next year. We'll see. Here we have Just After Sunset, which is more short stories. Um, none of these particularly stand out to me, to be honest. But uh, again, I think I got this from like a charity shop or something and worth reading because it's king. Lysi's Story, I read this 
in uh, 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 b -b 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 Milan in Italy when I was on well I wasn't even on holiday actually or I sort of was I went there to speak at a conference talking about social media and then my girlfriend at the time flew out afterwards to meet me and uh, yeah I was reading this while I was there this is a uh, another underrated one for me to be honest I think in his longer books in particular it really gives him a chance to shine because he's really good at kind of creating these worlds Misery, one of his most famous, about uh, super fan Annie Wilkes. Here we have Stephen King, Mr. Mercedes. This one was a five out of five for me. I probably, unless you're a massive Stephen King fan, I would say just read Mr. Mercedes as like a straight up crime thriller and then don't read the rest of the trilogy. But, you know, it's good enough. And uh, it's interesting because it deals with kind of terrorism and stuff. The two big sort of terrorist moments in it involve someone driving a car into pedestrians and someone planting a bomb at a concert. And both of those are terror attacks that happened in the UK. But I think King wrote about them before that, so... Maybe he's an Al-Qaeda. Maybe that's a really insensitive thing to say. I don't know. Sorry. Here we have On Writing, King's memoirs on the craft. Another 5 out of 5 for me. This is one I actually got to really late. I would say... If you can read some King books before reading on writing, you'll probably get more from it. But it is a great memoir, so you'll learn a lot about him. But you'll also learn a lot about writing and just how to get your, your work out there as well. Although the bits on agents and stuff are maybe less relevant now. But, I mean, it's King. It's King telling you how to write. Alright, next up we have Pet Cemetery. Uh, every time I even hear the title of this, the Ramones song gets stuck in my head. Uh, yeah. Little story about uh, Gage, little Gage and his family as they uh, move. Uh, do they move or are they just live in there? They live next to a big busy main road and they discover a pet cemetery where the kids bury their dead animals, only sometimes they come back. Another very disturbing book. All right, here we have Stephen King, A Rose Matter. This is another one of his like abused wife books. Um, not necessarily my favorite. It does get really trippy. She goes into a painting, and that's actually where the title comes from, because that's the name of her, like a shade of paint. I'd probably give that a 3.5 or a 4, maybe. Here we have Song of Susanna, which is one of the Dark Tower books. I don't know how much I can go into each of the individual ones. I can tell you which ones were, like, my favourites, I guess. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't even remember which... Oh, I see. This is the one where we go to see... Uh, the author of a book called Salem's Lot. And it starts getting really meta because King himself is a character in his own book. Here we have The Drawing of the Three. This is the second Dark Tower book. And it's actually my favourite one as well. Where we meet the quartet. We meet Eddie and Susanna. And uh, yeah, we, we start to make some real progress towards the Dark Tower. I definitely recommend the Dark Tower books. Here is number seven. Theoretically the last. But then there is number eight as well. The Dark Tower. And... Uh, as I said, read the Dark Tower series. Even if you read the first book and you don't enjoy it, continue on and read the second book because I think the second book is the best one in the series. So, and some people don't like the first book but then get into it. I personally did like the first book so I don't have that problem but um, because the first one is kind of westerny almost but rest assured there are many different genres to come. You know, they all get merged together. Here we have The Eyes of the Dragon. It's missing the front cover for some reason. Uh, but hey ho I know um, Edward Lorne here on booktube he doesn't like the eyes of the dragon he, he thinks that it feels like King is talking down to the reader for me I enjoyed it it's just uh, it's like a fantasy novel basically but it does tie back into the uh, Dark Tower books as well and uh, yeah I just thought it was like a sweet little fantasy to be honest it was a bit like this which is the girl who loved Tom Gordon it's not necessarily King at his best but it's a sweet little read, you know? And it's nice to see him, I think, experimenting with stuff like this. So here, this is about a young girl who gets lost in a forest. And uh, she keeps herself kind of sane by having imaginary conversations with Tom Gordon, who's a fictitious baseball player. Here we have The Green Mile. So this was originally, I think, uh, published in Sections, if I'm right. Uh, set on Death Row with John Coffey and uh, the story that he has to tell. A good book. A lot of people's favourite. Not necessarily mine, but um, yeah, still a good book. Here we have The Gunslinger. So that's the first Dark Tower book. Like I said, a lot of people don't necessarily like this one, but I, I personally really enjoyed it. It's also only a couple hundred pages long, so it's a nice little taster to uh, get you into the series. Here we have The Running Man, which he wrote as Richard Bachman. 
actually one of his best I think um, I don't know he's got a lot of best but this is a 5 out of 5 for me and if you want like a dystopian like a dystopian thriller then uh, this is the one for you here we have The Shining, so I'm going to commit more blasphemy and prove myself not a real Stephen King fan because this is the first uh, Stephen King book that I read, didn't like it very much and that's, to this day I reread it earlier this year and wasn't particularly big on it, it's probably like a 3.5 or a 3 out of, it was a 3 out of 5 the first time I read it and went up to a 3.5 but I still prefer the movie and uh, actually after having read this I was put off Stephen King for a little while and it wasn't until I picked up another one of his books that I really started to fall for his writing, you know. But uh, still, a lot of people do love The Shining and it's in a lot of favourites, so don't let that put you off. And if you want to see, you know, story of a hotel caretaker going mad, there's your book. Alright, here we have The Stand. This is the, like, uncut version. And, um, yeah, this is my favourite of his novels. I'm actually rereading it in December of this year, so that should be good. It's also his longest at 480,000 words, but don't let that put you off. I think uh, Cody from Cody's Bookish Corner. Cody's Book Corner. Cody, anyway, she read it recently, and uh, she really enjoyed it too. Yeah, I would just say, it's just a must-read book. Okay, and finally we have The Talisman, which he wrote with Peter Straub. I think this is actually the most recent one that I read. I read this when I went to Berlin with Becca. And uh, this is basically like an epic novel set half in our world and half in this fictitious world. And everyone has twinners and stuff. I actually really enjoyed it. I think I gave it, I think I gave it a 4 out of 5 at the time. But looking back, that was a bit harsh. I reckon it's a 4.5 for me. Here we have The Wastelands, which is one of the Dark Tower books. Not necessarily... My favourite. I think the ones in the middle of the series, I got a bit bored with them. I was just like, hurry up, I want to get to the Dark Tower. But um, yeah, I mean, you can read it to get to the end. Here we have The Wind Through the Keyhole, which is really thin. Look, it's in a really strange uh, format. And the paper's weird as well. But uh, this is Dark Tower book number eight. So it actually takes place in between a couple of the books. But you can kind of read it as a standalone or as like, uh, uh, what's the word? Like a book that comes afterwards. I don't know. Whatever. Here we have Thinner, which he wrote as uh, Richard Bachman. Quite enjoyed this one. Probably a four for me. It's about a guy who gets cursed by a gypsy. And uh, he just keeps on getting thinner and thinner and thinner. Wizard and Glass, which is another one of the Dark Tower books. Uh, yeah, don't really remember it. We get a bit of the love story element with Susan Delgado. Didn't need to be in those books. Don't know why he did that, to be honest. Wolves of the Colour, this is another Dark Tower book. I, I did enjoy this one actually a little bit more. Um, there's like a, a lot of battles and stuff in it, I think. If, 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 I correct, if I remember correctly, they all tend to blur together into one book, to be honest. So. And finally we have Under the Dome, which I did enjoy. I would probably give it a 4 or a 4.5. The, uh, the ending of it was weak. It kind of suffered from the typical sort of Stephen King syndrome where it had a weak ending, but... Uh, yeah, still very much worth reading for the world building, if nothing else. And I also like the start of it. Basically, this dome comes in over this small town, and uh, they all have to figure out what's going on. But I like the very start scene, because when the dome does come down, for example, it chops an aeroplane in half, and, you know, there are people stuck on either side of it and stuff. So, um, yeah, would recommend. So anyway, there we have it. That is my Red Stephen King collection. I'm starting to lose my voice from talking about them and I'm considering going to an open mic later. So this might not have been the best choice. But anyway, thanks as always for watching. Let me know in the comments if you've read any Stephen King and if so, which your favourite books are. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot.